What is up everyone? Today I have a very exciting video for you guys. Last time I released a video about the most insane headset I have ever used, it was the Pimax 8KX. And that headset is actually now my own because while it was sent to me as a review unit, I actually ended up buying it off of Pimax. But that headset is understandably out of a lot of people's price range. So you guys wanted something cheaper. So Pimax today have sent me over their Pimax 5K Super, which is an upgrade from their Pimax 5K Plus. And yeah, this thing has quite a few improvements. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Before we begin the video, this headset was sent over to me for review by Pimax. However, I don't get to keep it. So don't you think that I'm going to be like biased or something because this is my headset. <laughs> so first of all, let's take a look at the biggest difference between this and the 8KX. And that is going to be the price for many of you. This headset is 799 euro. That is quite a difference compared to the 1,299 euro of the Pimax 8KX. Now, both of these headsets do require base station tracking and either index controllers or some other base station tracked controllers. So for both of these headsets, you will need to pay the extra price of getting base stations. However, back when I was first going to review this, we didn't actually have a fully blown competitor to it at that exact price range. Because the index itself, because that is the price for the headset only, nothing else, 799 for the headset only, well, we now have a competitor, the Vive Pro 2. The Vive Pro 2 comes in at pretty much exactly the same price. They are going to be competing pretty much directly with each other for the high-end gamers. So first of all, let's begin with the exterior, just like we did last time. This headset comes with Pimax's brand new damage resilient coating, just like the 8KX did, which means the coating is kind of rubber-like, and if you smash it or rub something against it, it shouldn't get damaged as easily. And I have that confirmed with the 8KX, where it took a few hits here and there, and the damage pretty much just disappeared after a while, or you could just rub it off, which is really nice because a lot of people don't want to damage their expensive equipment. Then at the very top, you've got three buttons, one for power on and one for volume up and one for volume down. Now, while this is an interesting place to place those buttons, because you will kind of be pushing down on your head while you press them, at least they're there. A lot of headsets don't have these buttons at all, and it is kind of annoying to have to walk up to your PC every time you want to change volume or open up a menu. It's always nice to have hardware buttons. Now, this headset comes with with the KDMAS head strap, the modular audio strap, just like the 8KX. And many of you may already know that I'm actually a huge fan of this head strap. Now I know that many people in the comment section are not huge fans of this head strap. So I guess it really shows that everyone is different. And while I would love to invite you guys over to check one of these out before you shell out a lot of your money for it, I can't do that right now. Maybe sometime in the future. But I do love this head strap. It is very comfortable and it holds the headset very snugly on my head to the point where it just won't fall off no matter what movement I make. The back of it is also completely removable, just like on the 8KX, so that you can wash every part of this head strap in case you're doing exercise inside the headset. Because while the headset looks big and heavy, it actually isn't. Well, it isn't because it's so well balanced on your head. So I would say you would have no issues doing exercise in this. The Pimax 5K Plus also comes with Pimax's brand new comfort kit, the exact same one the 8KX came with, which means you get their new thicker foam pad and thinner foam pad. Once again, I find myself using the thicker one, it's nice and soft on my face, and it seals the gap better than the thinner one. The headset does also come with a nose gap cover, meaning it will cover up all the light that would normally enter through where your nose is, and it is actually nice and comfortable and does its job very, very well. I feel the need to say this because I have actually had some nose gap covers in the past that were actually more intrusive than they were helpful. So it's nice to see that Pimax got that down right. The headset does also have built-in headphones. Now, these are the headphones that come with the KDMA head strap, so the modular audio strap. According to me, these headphones are really good. Now, I can imagine that some people might have higher standards than me when it comes to audio, but these are actually really good for me. They have nice punchy audio and they kind of levitate above my ears, and even if they do touch them, it's just gently. So it prevents ear sweat when playing more intensive games, and they sound really good. Now, the only problem with this headset is while it's not so heavy and it's really nice and comfortable on your head, it does stick out quite a bit, so you might end up punching it a few times here and there when trying to do a little swing or something. 
Now, at the very bottom, we've got one USB Type-C port, and at the top, you also have a second one, hidden behind the interface, just in case you want to mount something there. Pimax does have their fair few accessories that you can actually purchase for this. They have the hand tracking module and they have the eye tracking module, but of course, those also mean more money. Now, the cable on this one is just as long as it is on the 8KX. It's one of the few downsides that I had for it because the cable on these is about five meters, and if you require anything longer, well, you are going to need to shell out the extra cash for an optic fiber cable sold by Pimax. And while this headset is cheaper, it's still at the point where I would think you might want a longer cable to come with it. Now, let's get into the bread and butter of this headset, because Pimax is known for making their insane headsets, of course, and that's why we're here. If you look at the lenses, once again, you notice that they are not normal lenses. That is because this headset sports the exact same FOV as our first one, which is 200 degrees. Yeah, you heard that right. 200 degrees FOV. And while I'll tell you a little bit later about how that is in game, I would much more prefer to first tell you about the brand new smacking feature of this headset. And that is 180 hertz refresh rate. Because while I did play around with 200 degrees FOV before on the Pimax 8KX, 180 hertz is something I have not experienced. My Pimax 8KX runs at 120 hertz, and so does my Quest 2. So this is on another league entirely, and compare that to also the 120 hertz of the HTC Vive Pro 2. So this is above any of those, but be careful, because that doesn't come without a price. While you can enable 180 hertz, not only is it experimental, and while I haven't found any errors with it during my weeks of testing, what you do instantly notice is the fact that you can only use 180 hertz at decreased FOV. And to be slightly more exact, this decreased FOV seems to approximate to about 125 degrees. And while that is understandable, because PCs are already quite stressed trying to run these machines, it is a problem because it feels like you're in a box. The FOV instantly gets decreased from being normal to being something more like an Oculus Quest 2. And that hurts, because when I first put this on and turned on the beautiful 180 hertz, I thought something was wrong. So while I do love it, I actually ended up switching back to 144 hertz. So unless you're playing a game that doesn't really require you to have really high FOV, but you would like to play at really high refresh rate, like for example, Beat Saber. Beat Saber really helps you out if you have a higher refresh rate, then I would say most of the time you wouldn't really be using the 180 hertz and you'd be playing at something more like 144. That's if your PC can even pull that. Because I have actually played quite a bit on this headset, and my PC specs are a Ryzen 5 3600X, overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz on all cores. We have 32 gigabytes of RAM clocked at 3200 megahertz. We have an RX 5700 XT, 8 gigabyte GPU also overclocked, and I don't remember exactly what the overclock is on that one. But I actually found no issues running this headset even at its normal resolution of 2560 by 1440. So as you can see there, that resolution, well, is nowhere close to the 8K resolution of the Pimax 8KX, but then again, this is the cheaper model. And that is still a nicer resolution than you are going to find on a lot of different headsets, because that is the resolution per eye. So that's where you get your 5K. And as I said, this thing competes pretty much directly with the Vive Pro 2. A lot of their specs are very, very comparable, if not the same. The 120 Hertz, the 5K resolution. Even though the 5K resolution on the Vive Pro 2 is actually slightly higher per eye than the Pimax with 2448 by 2448 pixels per eye. So you're kind of trading blows here. Resolution or refresh rate and an extremely high field of view. The fact that they both require a cable and the fact that they both require base stations. These things are pretty much competing directly with each other. And that all might be enough to get you to take a look at the high FOV monster. But then again, you might not. Because Pimax has had their fair few issues throughout the past few years. When it comes to build quality, when it comes to software issues, they have had those issues. And while I do feel I need to mention them, because they were there, I do also feel the need to say I haven't had any of them. Seriously. Now, a lot of people on the Discord did tell me that that could be because I got review units, and the review units might be better, but Pimax has assured me that they do their very best to give their customers the best experience they possibly can. So I can only go off of what I know, and I do love these headsets. 
Now, every Pimax headset does come with its Pi Tool software that does need to be used. This software is actually pretty simple to use and quite nice, honestly. And a lot of people were actually telling me about Pimax Experience, which I didn't get to dive fully into just yet, but they're saying it's really good and can be used to change pretty much anything to your liking about the headset, which sounds great, but that could possibly use an entire whole different video of its own. Now, the Pi Tool software is really nice. It hasn't crashed on me once, and it does seem to work very, very well. The first time I connected this headset, it completed its firmware update, and then you have the access to pairing things like controllers, pairing things like Vive trackers. Yep, you can do that all inside the headset, no dongles required, and you can change the FOV, the refresh rate, you can check out your games, including Oculus games. You can actually launch Oculus games directly from here. I have found that they do sometimes crash when launched from here, so I tend to just use Revive for that, but that's understandable. Uh, they're not really meant to be launched on a Steam VR headset. Other than that, to connect the headset to your PC, you're going to require one display port and two USB 3.0s. Pretty simple there, uh, two USB ports and one display port. I mean, I bet you can find room for that. I have room for that now because I had to get some for the 8KX. Oh yeah, and I bet a lot of you are going to be interested. So here is some through the lens footage of The Forest. It is a beautiful game in virtual reality, and it really allows me to show you guys the beauty of these headsets. Now, you will notice a little bit of lens distortion on the sides, of course. As I said in the 8KX video, that happens with any wide FOV headset because of the way the lenses have to be made. But what I have found is having that distortion there is actually better than not having it. It's better than having black bars there. It is less distracting than having black bars there, and I do not notice it while I am playing in game. I really don't. Like, it just kind of disappears after a while, which is fantastic. So just like the 8KX, it did not bother me. I know it could bother some people, and it is definitely there, but I seem to only see it when I go looking for it. Now, it is also important to note that that distortion will vary on your IPD, and while this headset does actually have a manual IPD slider, yes, yes, it actually does, that physically moves inside the headset, which is great. The range Pimax gives you for your IPD is about 55 millimeters to 75 millimeters. So, you know, things will vary upon that. And as I said, as much as I would love to have you guys here and check it out for yourself before making an educated decision to purchase or not to purchase, we can't do that right now, or maybe ever or maybe someday we will. What is it like to actually play? Well, this isn't my first time with a high FOV headset, as I said before. So my experience won't be as wow as it was with the 8KX. In case you want to see that, check out that video up here. But the experience is amazing. You can see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see. And since the headset is so well balanced on my head, the experience is amazing because it all just sort of disappears. Now, while the resolution on this one isn't as high and beautiful as my 8KX, it is still extremely high and beautiful. And don't get me wrong, 5K is a nice upgrade from the Quest 2's current 4K, almost 4K. And it is really hard to go back to any other headset once you have tried a high FOV one, simply because any other headset kind of looks like you're looking through binoculars or through a box. And those of you that have tried a Pimax in the past will know exactly what I'm talking about. And for a lot of people, that high price tag will be worth it. I mean, as I said, it is pretty much competing directly now with the Vive Pro 2. It has a direct competitor. And if there's room for the Vive Pro 2, there's room for this one as well. In games that you wouldn't normally be able to see your enemy from somewhere here, well, you'd now be able to do so. I was playing Robo Recall pretty much all night on this yesterday, and the enemies were just coming in at me. And for the first time in a very long time, I got scared. I actually jumped when I saw a robot. That doesn't happen a lot, trust me. I've played that game too many times to get scared. That was scary because it came at me from the side where I wouldn't normally be able to see it. And when I turned around, the FOV, it just kind of engulfed me. It was a really weird feeling and it is immersion increasing. A lot of people say, eh, FOV doesn't really increase immersion. It actually does. It does quite a lot. And people that have tried these high refresh rate, high FOV headsets will know exactly what I'm talking about. It is a whole different experience and it is beautiful to see these headsets coming out. In VR chat, you can now see much more of your friends than you would normally be able to. If you are using this thing for productivity, which I use quite a bit, I hop onto Discord calls with it. I do a lot of my productivity work in that new Steam VR desktop view. The screens are larger. You can see more of them. It's great. It really is. If you are here for my overall verdict and you want me to compare this with the Vive Pro 2, well, I would go with this. And while yes, as I said, they did have production issues in the past. Again, I can only speak for what I have 
in my hands, but looking at raw specs, 180 hertz, sure, at a decreased FOV, but comparing that FOV to the Vive Pro 2, they're very similar. The decreased FOV and the Vive Pro 2 FOV. 2.5K per eye. The fact that I have index controllers, I would go with this. Just looking at raw specs here. Once again, I was not paid by Pimax to record this review. I was not given anything to give them a positive review. I'm just speaking from what I have in my hands here right now. And the headset that I have here in front of me is a fantastic headset. I really do enjoy checking out these overkill headsets, these headsets that a lot of people might actually be interested in, but don't know whether they're worth to check out. And with these headsets becoming more and more popular, you can not only buy them from Pimax's website, you can also buy them from places like Amazon, which might get more people to want to check them out. So people that would have never thought about buying these headsets might now honestly put them onto their list and join something Pimax calls VR 2.0. Now, while a few people might disagree with this being VR 2.0. For example, Thrillseeker recently posted a tweet that said VR 2.0 was a wireless experience. While this is not a wireless experience, I do agree that it is a step above the normal VR experience. A few steps, actually. And Pimax is actually right now on their website having a sale called Switch to VR 2.0. And if you sign up for that, you're going to get a discount on their headsets. So in case you want to switch to VR 2.0, you can fill out that form and grab yourself a discount. Again, I get nothing from this at all, so I'm just trying to help you guys out in case you are genuinely interested in grabbing yourself one of these. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. This was my little review on the Pimax 5K Super. So if you guys liked the video, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape or form, we've got sick merch down below that doesn't put a huge ad on body and mugs that boost your FPS by 300%. If you guys are not yet part of our community, make sure to join our Discord down below. Make sure to join our Reddit down below where I will see you posting your spice memes. And if you guys want to know if I have a bunch of content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forwarding my balancing in the next video. Peace.